Hi, everybody. It's episode 447 of PodQuest. Hey. hey. It is Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. I am Chris. With me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. Hi, I'm here. Man, I forgot to update the the date or the episode number here, and I had to I had to fucking do it on the fly. Call oh, it live. Good job. Gl- glad I realized that before. I'm um, just reading it off, being like, "Oh yeah, it's still March 1st, everybody. It's still last week's episode number." <laughs> I mean, both of you guys are in here, and neither of you even noticed. Nope. That, no, yeah. I don't. Bunch I don't, of slackers. I don't look at things. That's that is I don't, true. You don't. I don't look. I don't look at anything above. Don't forget timestamps. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that is that's fair. So we for anyone curious what the fuck we're talking about, uh we we have like a, a shared Google Doc with like an outline of the show. And there there's some stuff that Richie put in there like three years ago that everyone ignores. Um and above mm-hmm. that is the episode number and the date, and below it is the actual outline. Yep. Yes. And I don't read anything at the top part, because Cobb does all that. And I that also is, yeah. don't don't read anything at the top part because I, I thought you were just going to say, I don't read anything. I, I mean, mean that, that is actually the true. the true part. It's mostly true. Let me tell <laughs> you. We just talked about that last week. You have you have been wanting to read a book for the last, like, eight years, and you just yes. don't. I've, I've had this book for pretty much as long as I've, like, gotten reconnected with this person who lent, lent me this book, and I have never read it. Wait, wait, or, wait, wait. This book was lent to you, and you yes. just... <laughs> yes, I like like they they we talked about it. He was like, "Oh, you should read the book here. You can borrow it and bring it back next time I see." And I was like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." Then I have not finished the book. I don't even know if he knows he lent it to me. I don't even know um, if he knows that I it, like it. Literally beats me up inside sometimes. I'm just like, man, I still have his book. There's like three. There's that book. There's uh and. That book and the copy of Akira I have were lent to me, and there's another DVD I have that were all lent to me that, like, people, I either, like, I never had a chance to return because they either stopped talking to me or I just never got around to watching them, and then they uh, just don't see them as often as I used to. Now, did they stop uh, talking to you because you kept stealing their fucking books and movies? <laughs> no, this is three separate people, three separate movies. Uh, No. No, uh, one one of them stopped talking to me because they thought I hated them for the way they quit their last job. Um, and so they and and it was also too depressing to hear me say no. I don't have any money to go out because I lived in my own house and had real life bills. And so every week when they still went to go to PJs, I had to decline, and it was too depressing. So they stopped talking. Um, and then the other one, I just. We just stopped hanging out. We still talk at least once or twice a week. Just haven't seen each other in three, four years. And then the book. So you, uh, you just got a free movie out of it. <laughs> for for the most part. For the most part. What a thief. Look, I didn't steal. They lent it to me, and I just haven't had the chance to get it back. Likely excuse. I've try, I've made efforts to hang out with them to return their stuff. Just haven't. Or at least one of them. The one who stopped talking to me. This is on them. I mean, that that, that is fair. Yeah. But just what a slacker. Yes, only a little Ste- bit. Stealing people's shit and then never actually reading. Yeah, and forgetting to post your your in my social medias until like 3 o'clock. So I'm like, fuck, I forgot to post that. I meant to post it at noon. Why don't you just schedule them ahead of time? Uh, Because I just forget to. I don't know if TikTok has a schedule function. Um, oh, that's true. I don't know anything about TikTok. And so, like, like I with, um, so, like, I posted a video on uh, YouTube on Friday last week. Go check out uh, YouTube.com slash at BeWannuts. Um, but I posted a video on YouTube last week that it, it took t- over... It. I waited all day trying to get this thing to upload properly. It actually went live at least once, but the HD version never uploaded properly, so I had to delete it and re-upload it like three or four more times before it finally got up properly. So it was supposed to be out Friday. It didn't come out until like midday Saturday. That was something I was able to schedule post. But I don't really think there's a lot of schedule posting for like social media stuff. Or if there is, I don't know if like it'll post in multiple outlets at the uh, same okay. time. So like it's just easier. Cause like if I do TikTok, I'm also doing, um, Instagram and then I'm going over to YouTube and posting that as a short as well. 
So it's just, it's easier to do it all at once. I just, I forgot. It's really all it was. I was busy eating, cooking lunch, cooking my bland lunch, and then watching Man, you gotta just Roll. You gotta just live live life on the edge. Just have have some hot sauce, man. One of these days. One of these days. <laughs> you should just invest in the like the the crazy hot sauces, like the oh, like the six hundred million Scoville hot sauces, and just fucking go all the way. I, just honestly, it, destroy the, your stomach lining. The, I think it's more acid than it is spice. Like I haven't really tried spice since like we determined that what my issues were were acid reflux. I haven't really tried spice, but. It was more, I was drinking an orange juice every day, and that my stomach was just like, fuck you, you're a fucking idiot. And I'm like, why? It's orange juice, it's good for you. And it's like, nah, nah, not anymore. And so, like, I think it was the orange juice that was really causing all my problems. Because, like, I went to Rodizio the day after we found out it was acid reflux, and I ate to my heart's content. I rolled the dice. I was like, I'm fucking, I don't care. I'm rolling the dice today, and then we'll stick to this low-fat, no-acid, blah-blah-blah diet tomorrow. And I didn't really react at the same as any other time. I gotta say, though, your body is just rejecting everything that's good. <laughs> like, you can't yeah. have gluten, you can't have citrus, you can't have spice. Like, what's the point I, of living? I shouldn't have sweets. Like, it, it's... Like, it, at this me. point, just fucking get an ivy. Just... Just get a fucking just just the, get all then, of the nutrients you need right into your veins. There's not even a point to eat anymore. Th- that then that's just gonna turn into I have too much salt in my diet because it's gonna be a sodium bag or a saline bag, and it's just no. That's, that's that, 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 that doesn't provide you nutrients. That just provides you um hydration. Yeah, true. You need you you need to get like the bag full of like ground up food or whatever they do for like coma patients. That's I know weird. they don't actually give coma patients ground up food. That was a joke. I know. Uh, but Rich, what's on the agenda? On the agenda, it's a short one today because not a lot has really happened. Um, Drew, you played the uh, tabletop, or I, can you really call it a tabletop game called Monikers? Uh, I played Tales of Arise. Cobb did too. Um, and Cobb started watching Avatar: The Last Airbender. Um, and then Cobb just has a question listed on the thing, but nothing else. So yeah, he has a question for us. It seems I do, and you guys will find out about it. Later, ish. Oh, that's a that's a that's a tease. I mean, for people listening, they could just hit the fucking timestamps and jump right <laughs> to it. But that would be a waste of everyone's time. Would it though? I mean, they could jump to the timestamps, jump to it, and then jump back to here to know what the tease is, and then maybe formulate their answers, and then they can respond to it on like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram while they're listening to the show. They could, and then they could jump back to like just the Avatar discussion, because who cares about monikers and Tales of Arise? You do. You played it. Doesn't mean I care about it. Get one thing straight right there, buddy. Oh, my. Um, but, Drew, how, how, what is and how is monikers? So, monikers is a a party game. Yes. Um, it go, takes part over three rounds. Uh, everyone gets dealt a hand of cards th- that will have different things on them uh some examples from like some of the images i'm pulling up are like drunk jeff goldblum or count chocula or there was like what are some of the ones we had last night uh squirting uh walk of shame thing one and thing two like waldo it it can be fucking almost anything (laughs) Uh, and the first round, after everyone picks five or more cards, depending how many people are playing, um, they all get shuffled into a pile, and then teams alternate turns, having to, in the first round, describe, get people to guess what card it is by saying anything other than what uh, any of the words in the card. So, like, if you were trying to get them to say Waldo, you could say where's, and, you know, or, or guy in striped red and white shirt or whatever. And each card is worth points for every one you get. Goes around till all the cards are done. Uh, 60 second turns uh, going back and forth between the teams. Then it goes to a second round where you're using the, all the same cards again, but you can only give a one word clue. And goes 60 second turns back and forth uh, till all the cards are gone. And then it goes to a third round where it's charades with the same cards and, you know, having to... Try to remember what some of the cards were and the, 
when people are acting the things out. Mm-hmm. And it, it just gets super ridiculous and silly. Yes. Monikers is a very silly game. I've played it a handful of times back in the day. I've only ever heard the name. I've never actually like played or seen it. Uh, same. That was how I was until No Rolls Bar had played it. And I was like, oh, okay, this game is good. <laughs> yeah. The, um, I was going to ask a question and totally fucking forgot what it was. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. We're just going to keep... <laughs> keep- Keep the awkward silence until you remember it. <laughs> Just keep the awkward silence. Let's go. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I got nothing. <laughs> um, but it so sounds like it could be a fun game. I, it, I, it, it was. It, like the first couple turns, people were like, because you know, you picked five cards at the beginning, and then you're seeing all these other cards, and it's like. The fuck is this? How do I describe this? Although all the cards, for the most part, will have like a little blurb about who or what the thing is, if you have no fucking clue what it is. You can also just pass and, you know, keep going till you find something that you can try to de- describe in a way that you can get your teammates to guess in like two seconds. But it, it definitely led to a lot of ridiculous silliness. It's... It sounds like, um, is it one of those games where you would need, like, a group of people that you know? Or do you think it, like, works when, like, you're kind of playing with, like, you know, like, like a mixed bag of people where, like, you don't know everybody, but, like, everybody knows somebody? Um, it, I don't think, it's, yeah, I don't think you need to know the other people for, yeah, for it's, sure. Like, it's not social at all. You don't need to know anybody to play this game. Like, you just gotta know the cards. Okay, yeah, because, like, you know, like, like the game Red Flags. Like, that game is yeah. not fun if you don't know everybody playing. Yeah, no, that one is very more yeah. specific of needing needing to know people's personal interests to make it extra funny. Yeah, yeah and like, even, even um, most of, like, the social deduction games, like Blood on the Clock Tower, Avalon, Secret Hitler, those mm. games are not as much fun if at least most of the people know each other in some vague form because you're just not as likely to be goofy and have fun with it with a bunch of strangers. Mm-hmm. It's fair, yeah. But, like, I mean, so we were playing, it was me, my dad, my brother, one of my brother's best friends who I've known for a long while now. Uh, his one friend who she's been coming to these game nights, her boyfriend, and then uh, I think a co-worker of my brother's who I just met and, like, everyone was, like, it was nobody had any issues doing any of the goofy shit for uh any of the uh charades part like my brother the first game we played one of the cards was big spoon so he immediately when got he got that in the charades just dove down on the floor and like put his arm out in front of him to you know <laughs> mime cuddling <laughs> and then also he had planking was one of the other ones. I think he got those back to back. So he got down on the floor, did big spoon. It was like, okay, got it. Pulled the next card, got right back down on the floor to do a plank. And it was like, okay, dove right into it. Fuck planks, man. They're the worst. Oh, planks are easy. Uh, Planks are easy, but (laughs) ring fit planks are the worst because they want you to put your ass up in the air to actually get a rep in when you're doing the plank. No, that's fair. Yeah, that's, like, I could do a good, solid, maybe 10-second plank, no problem. But, like, if you want me to do more stuff with that, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Well, maybe if you did more than that, you would be able to eat spicy food. No, um, I mean, well, yeah, you're right, because I would lose weight faster, maybe, and then my acid reflux wouldn't cause me issues. So you're right, you're kind of right there, kind of. Yeah. Um, Anything else about monikers, though, Drew? No, nah, it was just stupid, silly fun, and I'll be playing it more, because there's, like, I have the original and then more monikers. There there are multiple, like, expansions slash standalone expansion things for it. So I have, like, 700 cards now or something. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a while before we go through all of them. Oh, wow, I didn't realize, like, it was, like, one of those where it just, you could just keep buying, like, sets and stuff. Yeah, there's, like, multiple sets. I now kind of regret not buying the McElroy Brothers set when they did that, like, four or five years ago. But I was like, I don't know what this game is, so I'm not going to buy it. (laughs) I'm trying to remember how long ago I heard about this game. So I feel like it's been probably about that long. But I don't listen to to any of their stuff. Uh, Well, 
I don't know if you listen to anything that's on Max Fun. I don't know if maybe it like I've never even heard of Max Fun. They're a podcast network. They have a shitload of podcasts. I can almost guarantee I don't listen to any of them then. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But but yeah, it's good. Awesome. Well, Rich, how oh. ha- how's Tales of Arise? I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Guys, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Tales of Arise that is like 100% like the best thing any game has ever done. Well, not any game. Any JRPG has done in the last like 5 to 10 years. They don't have British accents. I'm out. No, Wait. no. It's good. <laughs> it's good. They don't have British accents. They don't and- have very bad British accents. So to be fair... It's really only the Nintendo games that have the offensively bad British accents. But generally, like, major JRP, like, I've, I don't think, all right, with the exception of probably Final Fantasy VII Remake, I cannot remember the last time I played a JRPG that they did not have terrible uh, British accents. I mean, the only ones I can think of are the Nintendo platform ones. Your Xenoblades, your, um, the, the most recent Fire Emblem. Yeah. E- even even fucking Pokemon Masters, like all of the British accents they had yeah. on that fucking thing were just awful. So, so like just in general, and I'm look, I'm not talking trash on like British accents. It's just like the voice acting in these games have has not been that great, especially over adding the top. yeah, especially adding those British accents. Uh, so this already brings a game up a hundred notches over a lot of JRPGs, but like. I, I've i always been a fan of the Tales series. I say that even though I don't recall ever beating any of them, because they're long as fuck games. And it has been, like, a goal of mine to try to start beating them and playing all of them, but there's, like, 30 of them or something like that. There's a lot of them. Um, and they they've always had, like, a good, unique battle system where it's not just, oh, you go in and you attack... It, you actually have kind of free control of your characters, and they continued that system in this one, where you have free roam of your characters in the battle arena. You hit the attack buttons, and then you have the different other like your your. So your main attack button is the bumper, and then your face buttons are like your secondary attack, and then your D pad buttons are like your ultimate attacks, and it's just it's really fun the way they put this battle system together because it's the. The fights aren't long, but they're enjoyable each time I get in them. And, like, they found a good, like, midway of, like, having a good fight system, um, even with all the call-outs, because, God, they say a lot when you're fighting. Um, which I'm still trying to figure out if there's a way to turn that down. Uh, I don't so, think there is, because I've heard that complaint from other people. Yeah, it's, there's, because you, I, I am, so, I have three, four Four characters at this point. Like, wh- where I ended my stream last night, I have four playable characters. I was about um, to ask you how many characters you've gotten. Yeah. Uh, but I've only played with three playable characters. Like, I literally ended stream just as I got the fourth character. And I all I hear is the two female characters that I have, because they're both magic users, constantly shouting their magic abilities. And I'm just like, oh my god, this is a lot. This is It, this it is, is very, very anime. Much. It's it's very it, you, you want to know how anime it is, Cobb. Here's how anime this game is. At about four and a half hours in, you get an anime title sequence. But I feel like I've seen that actually. You get the so it's the I I'm assuming I I haven't like sat to watch it, but it's the intro sequence you get if you don't touch any buttons in the menu screen or in the in the like the the title card. Okay, I did see part of that, but I think I actually saw it in the game at some point. Yeah, it's about three to four hours in. It's pretty much once you clear the starting area, they give you this anime title card, this anime title sequence, which just, I died. I died the second this happened. Like, I was like, this is fucking amazing. I can't believe it. Uh, the story's pretty good, uh, so far at least. It's, it's, um, it, you're 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 playing as characters on one planet who are being held slaves by by the rate by the humans from the planet attached to them basically and you're trying to liberate your planet from the bad guys uh it's you have a man that wears a mask you have you have a man that wears a mask and feels no pain um and you have a character who is from the other planet as your secondary character that uh nobody likes uh, from what I'm hearing, not many people like her, 
in general, like meaning like people who've played the game, like people the, the don't main, like her, like the the pink haired girl whose name I yeah, can't remember. She, she own. Nobody likes her. Uh, and she sucks. She's a fucking bitch, man. She sucks so much. I mean, she's been fine so far, but I just got so the last thing I did was I went to the ruins and got her an outfit that wasn't her little sundress. I mean, that that's kind of the start of it, though. Like, she refused to wear clothes of your people because she had to honor her people, but you're in hiding, so you had to go out of your way to find her clothes. And that's just kind of the start of her being terrible. I mean, she's and, a princess and, or something, isn't tox- she? Uh, no, they never said that. She's just somebody right now. I don't uh, see, think... I thought she was some sort of princess. I, they, have, they have not admitted she's not said anything as of her past and why she has the the core and whatnot like there's no as far as i recall there was no explanation on her as of this point but yeah, even fair. even though that doesn't just because she's a princess doesn't excuse her to be a bitch but like sure. she it's not an excuse it's more just you know like, like that's just the trope is the princess who's on the run acts like an entitled baby but like she she continues she's like her her constant thing is like i'm not in this fight for you our 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 uh our what's it called our objective is just align she's like i'm not here to she flat out says i am not here to liberate your people our objectives just align similarly i want to defeat all the lords and for you defeating all the lords means your people will likely be liberated I don't want your people to be free. She's flat out, I believe, has said, like, I don't want your people to be free. Like, I don't care about your people. And she's just rude. She's just constantly just... She sucks. You'll you'll keep finding it out as you play more. Because uh, you said you're only, like, three-ish hours in. Um, yeah, like I said, literally, like, the last thing I did was she got her outfit, and then I was able to fast travel back to the main settlement. Yeah. So you're... you're, you're you still you still have quite a bit of ways to go before you like really start to learn each the, uh, the this character and any of the other characters that you have. Uh, but uh, like I really enjoy the battle system. I do. It, it works very well. I um, had to remap most of the buttons, but I I like the the concept. I did, did not like the button layout fucking at all. Why? Um, I I so and correct. It's been it's been since sunday so i might be misremembering how it was set up by default but um i believe attack and like dodge were both on the right triggers i believe so right bumper was is attack and right trigger is dodge yeah i didn't like that um i don't play with my index and middle finger neither do i Um, I and i like being able i like being able to like hit both of them kind of at the same time (sighs) but I mean, I get it's your personal preference. I'm not trying to say like, you, like you you changing things is is dumb or whatever. It's your personal preference, but like you still, even if you're in the middle of an attack, if you go to dodge, there's still time between that. Like you can't be hitting them both at the same time. Oh no, no, I know that I that I'm not hitting them at the same time as in like 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 well, dodge canceling or whatever. I just mean like I I like to not have to like worry about that and just very like attack and then already be ready to hit roll. Um, I'm also playing it on Steam Deck, which it's a little it it's not as like comfortable to move between like the bumpers and the triggers just because it's so big. Okay, yeah, I mean I'm using I'm using my um uh fucking Stadia controller. But wait, do you use both your index and middle finger for your bumpers and triggers? No, that's what I was saying. I don't do that. So Maybe. like I only I yeah because like it would feel weird on a controller on the um. On the Steam Deck, there's actually a little bit more space. Like, like I just picked up my Xbox controller just to make sure, like, I wasn't, like, misremembering how it felt. Um, but, like, if you just rest your, your hands kind of along the top, like, your index finger can, like, actually hit the triggers and the bumpers, like, with barely any move. Mm-hmm. Um, the Steam Deck, just because it, it's, it's kind of like the Switch. Like, it's oblong and kind of bulky, so, like... It doesn't feel as smooth to go from bumper to trigger on something like that. Um, so I, I preferred having it. Honestly, if if they didn't use the face buttons the way they did, I would have 100% put dodge on one of the face buttons. I mean, I, I'll say, like, I, I, like, 
I kind of want to remap a little bit, but at this point, I'm too too ingrained into what it was. Because they have jump as B, and, like, for me, jump is A. Yeah. And so, like, I'm just like, I, I kind of want to change that up, but A is also accept. And so, like, if I were to change uh, jump from B to A, and then that means that A would then be B, and so B would be accepting things. And so then that would, like, throw me off, because you don't... B is not accept. It's never accept. I've never played a game where B or circle are accept. And if you have, you're wrong. It's just 100%. Every I, every PlayStation 1 era Final Fantasy game. It was always X. Nope. It was to accept no. things. Nope. PlayStation 1 era Final Fantasy, it was circle still, because that's how Japan does it. Circle is accept, X is decline. Yep. Oh, I, I, I only ever played 9. <laughs> so nine may nine may not and have done I, it. I don't. I, don't I know think, seven did, and I'm ninety nine percent sure eight I, I did. I don't think eight hundred percent. I yeah. I don't think nine did that. Um, like I remember, I I know I did play Final Fantasy seven a little bit when I was it was when I was a youngin, but like I don't remember Circle being accepted in that game. Uh, but like in common common game knowledge nowadays, Circle and B are not accept ever in, ever unless in unless you're in Japan. B, B, yes. B is never accept. But I think in Japan, a lot of times, like, like circle is still, like, the default because that's the, you know, circle means yes, X means no. Um, but I, when I say circle and B, because it's, it's the, the left button. The, or the, the right, right button. button. The right button. That's what I mean. The right button. I know is... what you, I knew, I didn't know what you mean. Uh, but, but hey, on the, on the Nintendo, um, the right button was the A button. Yeah, and that's what always throws me off because mm-hmm. that ends up being accept, I think. It yeah. does. And, and but it's like my me it's like B is not accept. B is decline, A is accept, and like I'm whenever I'm playing Switch games specifically, I do ha- I mean, I have to look down at my controller quite frequently with pretty much any game because every fucking controller is different. But, I mean, the ones with letters, it's Nintendo is the only different one. Well, Every yeah. other lettered controller is the fucking same. Yeah, because like, because I'm looking at my Stadia controller and my one of my Joy Cons and my my uh, plus sign Joy Con, and it's like, yeah, the Y and X's are opposite, and the A and B are opposite on the Joy Cons. Mm-hmm. And the Stadia controller is the same as it's the, the Xbox same as an Xbox controller. I'm pretty sure it's the same as the Steam controller. Yeah, I'm yes. sure it is. And it's just like. Uh, fucking controllers. But uh Tales of Arise, I I am enjoying it a lot. It is very anime. It is very anime. Um and it's going to be a long game. I've talked with people, I I've rated it out because I've been playing it on stream. I've rated it out to people who are playing it. And they've said that um like some of the problems with the game that like longtime fans of this series have uh are is the fact that um there's a lack of money gathering in this game. So, like, you don't get money after every fight. Um, I noticed that. And, and, like, you you get it from doing, like, side quests and things like that. And, like, to get, like, the best equipment, the best armors, and constantly upgrade, you're going to have to constantly be selling things. Um, Or, eventually, fishing gets unlocked, and you're going to have to fish the best fish to be able to sell them. And uh, to to be able to get the best weapons. When I was remapping the controller buttons, there was the separate section for fishing. Yeah, um, the, uh, I like the outfit system, um, which is pretty cool, as, as you wander the, uh, the world, you find these, um, uh, owls that will give you different outfits, and as you continue playing through the game, like, uh, Cobb, you have a, uh, a, a new outfit for Iron Mask, you could actually change, go to your outfit and change back to the original Tathers that he yeah. was in, and but same you with, you still she- keep, you yeah. still keep all of the, um, the benefits of well, actual like because because there's two different sections there's the equipment and then there's outfits yeah and so you can your equipment is whatever he's wearing now that but then you switch to the outfits and that's just the skin and like as you find these uh these owls they give you different things like headbands and things like that uh right now i have iron mask because i just got uh sunglasses and somebody on stream was like i want to see the mask wearing sunglasses I put him in sunglasses and specs, like big regular glasses. Um, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't even wear them over his eyes. It's dumb, but it's hilarious because now he's wearing two glasses. Um, she yeah, owns I... out. She owns outfit is too big to have any tails on it, so you have. I had her running around with two different kinds of ears. 
Yeah, I have, um, I, I got, like, ears and a tail so far and, like, a couple, like, hair accessories. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. But then I had also, I for, I, I've had this game for a while, and so I, like, it came with some DLC stuff. I don't know if you got that or not. Yeah, I got um, some of the DLC stuff. But so, like, I got, like, an, an upgraded sword and gun for both of them, like, at the start. Yeah, I didn't um, use that right away because it was so strong. It, like, that's, like, three or four weapons in. So, like, I waited until I had a weapon where the increase between the weapon I have and that one was, like, within 80. Because that was, like, a reasonable increase instead of, like, 150. But I did use that for a bit, and now they're obsolete. <laughs> yeah, I, I equipped them and then, like, got into a fight, and, like, both of the enemies took, like, three hits. Yeah. I'm like, oh, these are, like, significantly stronger. Okay. Sig- significantly <laughs> stronger, but also I am five hours further than you at this point, and they're obsolete. I mean, that's that's always the way that stuff goes. Uh, but the, the, re- the reason I was bringing that up is because along with the outfits, you can also reskin the weapons. Yeah. So, like... The weapon that Shion gets is just, it looks like a, like a basic ass hunting rifle. Yes. Like something yeah. that we would have. And I'm like, well, that's fucking lame. So I reskinned it back to her like space looking gun. Her space laser, yeah. I will say the fucking DLC is bullshit. It's um, all, it's all armor sets. There's not, uh, there's no actual content DLC, but I believe there's like some skill, um, skill points that are assigned to those outfits. So like, you can get different skills based on the outfits and costumes that you get from the DLC. So but it's, it's not that. It's not that it's just armor. It's that it's the most stupid fan surf service armor. Mm-hmm. Every single character has at least three swimsuits. Yeah. It's anime. All of the me- All of the men have, like, full body swimsuits. All of yeah. the women do not. Yeah. But, like, I had to literally go to each character and just, like, hold the down arrow. Um, to clear all of the little fucking dots next to him. So I was, re- this is a me problem, not a probably anyone else problem. Uh, every time I opened the, the menu, there was like the little like notification symbol over the DLC area. Yeah. Like, hey, like there's stuff you haven't looked at here yet. And it drove me up the fucking wall. Yeah. That, so I had it's... to go in there and go through every single menu and every single item to clear it. Yeah. That's, I, I'm having the same issue. Um, I have to clear them all, and I just haven't, like, I try to just not be in the menu long enough to make it bother me. Well, I, I think I missed a couple <coughs> of tips that popped up, um, so I was trying to figure out how to do a couple things, um, like, open the map. Um, I just, I did not know it was assigned to a face button, because that seemed silly at the time. Um, so I assumed it would be either on one of, like, the D-pads, or, like, just in the menu. And then, no, I found out it was just mapped to the face button. Wait, what was that? What was? The map. Like, like opening up the map. Oh, yeah. Opening the map is X. Because, like, th- they tell you to go somewhere, but if that if that somewhere is off of your current area, there's no, like, marker for yeah. it. Yeah. The, the map is kind of bad. Um, like, it's, it's, uh, it's very bad. There's, there's no generic world map, and so if you're trying to find a location that you're being uh, pushed towards or being told to go to, you have to actually go from location to location. Uh, until you find the marker that it's trying to tell you. It's yeah. not, there's no, like, icon on the map telling you where to go. You have to look, location, location. So, wouldn't, wanna know how bad the DLC is? I'm looking at it on Steam right now. Um, I just, don't look at it. Don't look it up. How much do you think it would cost to get all of the DLC? $30. Drew? $100. More. Oh, okay, how many DLC things are there? <laughs> Uh, let's see, there's the pre-order pack, the starter pack, the battle pack, the premium item pack, the custom pack, the travel pack, the costume pack, level up 1, level up 2, level up 3, level up 4, level up 1, uh, plus 10 level up, plus 10 level up 2, so, like, it levels you up by 5, 10, 15, 20 levels uh-huh. if you get all 4, and then 20 levels if you get the 1 and 2, the beach pack, the beach pack, the school pack, the school pack, because it's male and female for each, uh, warring, uh, warring states packs for male and female, two separates, relief support pack, growth boost pack, hoodle attachment pack, SAO collaboration pack, one, two, three, four hundred thousand gold each at each. It's a hundred thousand. Did you just go- say SAO like sword art? Yeah, there's a sword art online pack. That um, fucking geez. explains the one outfit. There, there's one outfit for the, for Iron Mask guy that looks like fucking Kirito's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And I thought that. I'm just like, that looks like Kirito's jacket. And it, like, the description is like, this looks like a thing that belonged to a yeah. legendary swordsman. I'm like, There's money, money is so hard to come by in this game that they released four packs of 100,000 gold each. How much, two, how much? Two dollars a pop. Man, this game went hard on microtransactions. $155.73 for all DLC attached to this game. That's just, that's criminal. Yeah, that's, I know, like, like, what is, what is the relief, uh, a nano pack load of, uh, power? What was that for? Relief support pack, uh, I don't know, expansions. It doesn't even say why it was relief, like, yeah, and the worst part is none of these things are included in like the ultimate version. <laughs> or no, may, no, some of it is. You get uh, it's it, it it's a if I were to buy Tales of Arise Ultimate, it'd be a hundred and nine dollars, which base game is fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, and it doesn't list what comes along with the Ultimate Edition on the Steam Store. It's it's insane. It's insane. It's absolutely obnoxious. Do not get the DLC for this game. Um, but the game itself is very fun and it's very good. Uh, I didn't realize it was only a year and a half old. I thought it was a, I thought it was like a 2020 game, uh, but it's a 2021 game. Yeah, um, I'm glad I only paid like $17 for it. Yeah, me too. The, I, it was on sale for like less than 20 or something like that. And I, yeah. I got it. That's, it was like one of my Christmas gifts to myself. I, it's worth the purchase. Like, I mean, it's I, a, 40 hour game for just the main story apparently. Yeah, if 40 to 80 hours from what I'm being told. Like you could you get an entire whole game inside of the game if you do every content in this. Yeah. Uh how long to beat has it listed as 40 and a half for main story, 56 for main plus some side quests. Yeah. Um and then 73 and a half for completion. Completionist. completionist. Yeah, which I'm probably not going to go completionist, but I'm probably going to make sure all the quests and stuff are done. I'm not going to worry about like, oh, I have to gather all the fish or I have to do all of the birds or this I like I'm not going to worry about like the minute stuff, but I will definitely be doing all the quests and content that's connected to it. If that makes sense? Yeah, it does. Um, and it, it seems cool so far like the little bit yeah. I have played of it. Yeah, it's fun. It's cool. It like it's just I'm I'm having a good time with it. Uh, it's making me really in like really wanting to go back to other JRPGs that I haven't played. I haven't played a JRPG in so long. Final Fantasy um, 16 comes out in June. I'm 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 I, that's I, most games nowadays aren't going to be day one games for me just because it's so fucking expensive. Like, gaming, games are just way too expensive, but, like, that might be one of them, depending on where I am with gaming and where I am, what I'm playing around June-ish. That might be a day one game for me, because I know, I know it's a Final Fantasy game, and it's kind of, like, a mix between, like, a Soulsborne and action RPG type of combat system, so, like, I'm definitely going to like it, and it's going to be at least 30 hours, so I know I'm going to get my money's worth on that aspect. What if you hate it? I, what I if hope... you hate it, but I like it? Uh, yeah. That I that would be weird. That would be absolutely weird. Um, but let me tell you, when you get a perfect dodge in Towers of Arise, it feels so satisfying because like so, everything slows down real quick, and then you. Can I was about get... to ask if something happens because I, I I wasn't sure if I'd gotten one yet. Yeah, it'll, like everything will slow down for like a like say a second. It'll like slow down because it gives you a time to react because it. You should have the skill unlocked at this point to where if you get a perfect dodge, you can, uh, like hit your attack button and he'll go and attack and he'll break the enemy from that attack right there. Oh, which... I didn't know. I don't have that unlocked. I, I yeah. unlocked something else for both of them. Uh, you, you'll get it. You'll get it soon. Like it's one of the, I think it's, I think it's one of the skill, uh, uh, emblems. I can't remember what they're called. Titles. I think it's one of the ones that's open as soon as, like, it's it's part of the initial opening of that skill. Block. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it, it was definitely there. I saw that and said, oh, I'm, I'll probably very rarely find use for this, so I just didn't get it, because no. I'm a dodge early person, not a wait until, like, the right moment no, to dodge. But what I'm saying is I don't think you have to spend skill points to get it. I think it's... No, it was, it's, it's like it's like a 200 skill point thing, I is think. It, okay, I don't know, I can't remember... Um, but it, it is satisfying to do, to get, I am, I am somebody who, who I'll sit there and I'll wait to try to get that perfect dodge. 
Um, I don't get anything and, out of it usually, so I usually am like a go in, attack, as soon as the enemy looks like it's ready to attack, I roll away, let them do their thing from a distance, and then dash well, back in and, and attack and some more. S- see, the, getting the perfect dodge, You, if you get the perfect dodge, you can then attack in that perfect dodge uh, sequence and break them, which then allows you to continue doing combos and hitting them up in the air and doing more combos while they're staggered and not being able to attack. I, it, it probably will come in handier once I'm not fighting like the same, like, six dogs and three bees over and over <laughs> yeah I, it, it'll when you yes the combat and fighting gets a lot more intricate and you have to actually pay attention to a lot more uh it makes it like for me it, it, it gets a little difficult because i have all my stream overlays and so like where my party's health is is covered up kind of by one of my overlays so i'm not really paying attention to that and, like, you do, you can't just go in and run and gun in this game. You actually do have to pay attention to what the enemies are doing, because the way they did healing is really cool. It's very different than I'm used to, um, in pretty much any game ever. Um, and so, like, you actually do have to manage your healing, uh, on a per resp basis, essentially. So, Drew, the way they did healing in this is, you could say they took a, a, a influence from D&D, from the time that you, take your nightly rest to the next rest, you get a pool of CP, which is cure points. And every time a character casts a curing spell, it pulls from that pool as well as their normal magic commodity. Interesting. And so, like, if they're doing... The stronger the heal, the more CP it takes. Also, on top of that, there are world events. Cobb, you haven't really gotten into these yet, but you sh- you will very soon. There's world events that you use CP for as well. So you can, like, clear a fire from an area, melt a huge chunk of ice, cure an actual person who's on the field. That also costs CP. So that's, like, you have to manage making sure you have enough CP in case you're in a battle. So you do have to really pay attention to what's going on in a fight, because if you're taking too much damage... And they're just healing you left and right and over and over and over. You're not going to have enough points to do some of these world events. Which, you could just go, rest, and then come back and run through all the enemies without fighting them and do them if you really needed to. But if you if uh, all of your characters faint, it takes half your CP and brings you back to life. Instead of it being immediate game over. Um... So it's, it's a neat, different, like, way to do healing, so it's not just like, oh, well, you get max MP and and this and that after each fight, so we're not even going to worry about healing, and you can just go. Like, it actually adds a little bit of strategy. Um, you can also assign different, like, uh, you could go through the menu and assign the AI different parameters for, like, when to heal. So it's initially based off of 50% health, heal or use an item. Uh, and then you can mess with that differently to where it's like, oh, if they're at 25% health or if they're at this, and there's different, like, types. So there's, like, the basic types where I have just set whatever they started you with where it's 50% health, but then you can go through and it will it names it, like, play as a tank or play as a this or play as a that, and it it has different naming conventions for does the it, AI. Um, does it, like, give you more options the further you get or something? What do you mean? So, like, I, I only briefly looked at that, but re- all I had was, like, be, a, like, it was named slightly differently than this, but it was basically, like, be aggressive, be defensive, or focus on healing. Uh, I mean, I think that's all, but, like, there might be more as you, be, you might unlock more because each character has different perks and skills, um, to where you can customize it. It's not, you don't just have to have it set to how they have it. You can customize it and make it up how you want and the way your play style. So oh, if you don't, okay. Yeah, if you don't want them healing at 50% health, you can have them healing at 25% health. Or if you want them using an item first before using magic, tell them to use an item before using magic. But, like, this is the other thing that uh, they did different. Uh, characters can only use items on themselves. They can't use items on other characters unless it's a, uh, a like a Phoenix Down type item. So okay. if you're... If you're telling them to only use items, if you're telling them to heal at 50% or at 25% with an item, that means they'll heal themselves with magic first unless they get below 25% or something like that. It's it's very interesting. It's a, it's a neat little engine that they put together that I haven't really messed around too much with. 
It, did you play the demo from like around when it launched? I believe I did. I don't remember. Uh, so like, like the, the demo was further into the game. So if, yeah, I don't know if you had the full party, but you had a pretty full party. And after kind of like a boxed canyon sort of section to like familiarize you with the the controls, it kind of just dumped you into like a big open field. Yeah. Um, and there were just like there was there were a handful of side quests to grab and like a bunch of different enemies to fight. And like the whole thing gave you a pretty good feel for the combat, especially the combat when you had like a full party of people. Yeah. Um. And I remember like I remember ha- like swapping between characters because the healers weren't necessarily like healing the way I needed them to. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, well let let me play as the person that can heal so that I can heal as needed. Yeah. But like it hadn't really gone into the like oh you can change your uh. Your settings. Yeah. I, that's one thing I, I haven't really done is messed around with playing with the other characters. I've only used Iron Mask. Um, and, like, I I just unlocked the third character last play session as well as the fourth character at the end of the session. Like, so I haven't really had a lot of time to mess around with them. But, like, I do want to try... The third character you get is a magic user, is a strictly magic user. So, like, I want to try playing with them. Um, cause like the combat, the way they did it, I don't, Drew, did you play the uh, demo for it at all? No. So the combat, um, you have your main attacks, which have a combo up to a certain number. It's different for each character. And then you have, um, fucking Mike. Uh, then you have, uh, your, I, I think it was AG ability, ga- ability gauge, which are these little diamonds that you get. And as you unlock more skill, uh, sequences you can uh, you can get more ag and your skills your your which you have to hit the face buttons to use uh will cost a number of ag which then refill as time goes on in the fight if you're not fighting it'll refill faster than if you are fighting um so like the magic user right now at this at the point that i'm at they have like s- like and I've only had them for three hours. They have, like, seven AG points because all they do is magic. So you're sitting there as, like, the magic user just pressing the button and having them cast. There's a casting time. Um, and it's just, like, you, you have to manage your these little diamond gauges that you have as well as doing combos. And it's it's just it's very cool. There's a lot more to it than I thought there was going to be. And I'm happy that they went with, like, this system of, like, these diamonds that refill over time in the battle, then like, oh, you just have a number. Like it, 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 it's it's a different feel for an RPG. Yeah, it seems like it has some interesting things. I just personally have never liked a an RPG where you have multiple characters, but it's not turn based. Like I never feel like the ways they give you to have like the little bit of control over them ever feel good. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's um. Like in this one, you have you have you you don't have any control over your other characters except for giving them the AI commands. Um, but like it's more beneficial, especially for like the magic users, to just let them let them be AI controlled because if they're being AI controlled, they have access to all of their abilities. But if they're being controlled by you, you only have they only have access to x amount of abilities there's limit to what abilities they can actually use because there's a limit to how many button inputs you have which is dumb but but you can also you can swap between which character you control in battle yeah so like if you're using like like the iron mask guy who's like all all melee and you're just not feeling you you can swap to somebody that does ranged or yeah like a different fight style yeah and like go that way yeah, you can hot swap and just, again, let your characters just do what they want while you're sitting here attacking with whatever other character. So if you are feeling like, oh, I'm in this fight and my healers aren't healing the best, you can swap over to your healers and just manage healing and, and how they would attack throughout the entire fight um, whenever you're in those situations. It Like, I, I get what you're saying, that, like, there is... Like, Final Fantasy VII was really the only game that kind of did it really... Like, Final Fantasy VII Remake was the only game that did it really well, where, like, you your ATB went up, and both characters just kind of acted on their own, even when you had control... Or all the characters kind of acted on their own, but you had to command their ATB. So, like, they did that very well, because you turned it into turn-based. Okay. Essentially. That is... Yeah. That is the one time where I didn't hate it. (laughs) 
but like this this one like the I have not had an issue with the AI not doing what I needed them to do. And it's not about it's really not about their small abilities for the most part. It's about um their boost abilities, which is are like as as you fight in combat, you fill up a gauge called your boost gauge, and that's what you really need to pay attention to and use at certain times to help you clear certain fights. Because, for instance, I have the mage character, her boost ability allows her to cancel the casting of any other casters. So, any uh, using her wouldn't really make a difference, because all of her attacks won't cancel those castings. It's only her boost ability that'll cancel. Otherwise, just run around as Iron Mask and try to find the enemies that are casting and try and break their cast before they're able to get it done. So, but, like, I, I haven't had an issue with, like, them doing what was needed. I haven't had an issue with them, like, not healing me while I was dead or whatever. They they're, it's it, they did really good with the AI. Okay, that's I, good. Yeah. I, and, it, like, I don't know if they did it in this one, but in previous Tales games... Because all the Tales games, as far as I can remember... I mean, I've only really played Tales of Symphonia and maybe one other. Um, but they've all had, this uh, like, a similar battle system where it was... Um, like, 2D battlefield with, like, it's kind of like a brawler style where you can move up and down the field a little bit, but it's all 2D characters and sprites. Um, in the old ones, you could actually, say, have four players connected to your console, and each of you control a different player or different character in combat. I don't think they have that in this one because of the way the camera works and how it's more of a 3D open arena. But, like, that was always a cool thing with the old ones where, like, me, my brother, and Shahed, we would get together and we would play Tales of Arise. This is probably why we never beat it, because it's such a long-ass game, and we'd try to sit down over the weekend and beat it and not be able to do that. Well, maybe you just need to play better. Uh, maybe. 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 Um, also, they just, those guys have zero attention span when it comes to long games back then. Um, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying this game. I can't wait to, I can't wait to get to a point where it opens up. Like, it's still very linear where I am, like, seven seven hours in, it's still very straightforward and very story-heavy. You're a, I feel like you should be further in by now. No, not seven hours in, ten hours in. Uh, I played for seven hours on Sunday and three hours last night, so ten Oh, hours that's right, because you're not playing it every day, are you? No, uh, I'm, take, I'm playing it in most days that I'm streaming. Um, there's likelihood that I'm going to take one day a week just to play something else, just to keep the game fresh and... Also, kind of just to have additional content ma- to be made so that I can continue posting things on YouTube and whatnot. Um, but it's just, yeah, I will be doing like at least one day, or m- probably at most right now, or no, I, let's say at least one day a week playing something that's not Tales of Arise. But I will most likely be playing Tales of Arise three so throw days a week. Everybody for a loop. Ready? That one day, one time, play like Tales of Vesperia. I mean, I could. I bought that on Switch forever ago, like at least a year ago. It was on a really good sale, and I bought it on Switch like a year ago, and I never played it. I just think that'd be funny. Like, you're just like, all right, yeah, we're not going to play Tales of Arise today. We're just going to take a little break. So we're going to play, uh, we're going to play Tales of Vesperia. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this this game, it's fun. Uh, I'm, I'm liking it. Yeah, the, the couple of hours I have into it so far, like, like you said, like the, the combat's fun. Um, it's, it's stupid anime bullshit, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and, like, I think the world is interesting. Like, at least a little bit that, like, has kind of been explained so far. Yeah. I'm glad they, um, they, they, I feel like, so, like I said, as far as I can remember, I've only ever really played Tales of Symphony. I can't really remember. I swear I've played at least one other. Um, but if, if I remember in Tales of Symphony, there, there, it's always been a story Are you thinking between maybe of Tales two... from the Borderlands? No, no, <laughs> no. But I know there's, there's always been... Like, a story between two worlds. And Tales of Symphonia, it was really dumb, but really funny, that, like, basically what it was, were there were these two planets connected by a fucking pillar. And, like, the goal was to get the Chosen One to a pillar and whatnot, and blah, blah, blah. But, like, these planets were always connected by this pillar somehow. I don't know. Um, and, like, I feel like that's not, the that Symphonia might not be the only one that that story was in. But it seems like the Tales games always lean into, like, multiple worlds and things like that. And they, they do a good job of kind of building these stories of, like, one one civilization is very, very well off and one civilization is not in, not not well off or 
basically enslaved in some way, shape, or form. So, like, for instance, in Tales of Symphonia, it's depending on what planet has the chosen one, uh, it is doing better than the other planet, and so it goes back and forth to create a balance between the two and stuff like that. So they always have a good story setting of, like, creating balance and having a one-on-one. Like, this was... This, but this story and the way they're building with putting it together with all the whole like liberation and and slavery, I was not I was not expecting that at all, and I'm really liking how they put this together. Yeah, this is the first Tales game I've ever even started, so I knew none of that. Yeah, it's they're 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 great games, man. They are great games. It's been it's like I said, it's been like a dream of mine to play through them all, but there's a lot. There's a lot of them. Uh, and somebody I recently rated out to has said that they did play through them all. Like, they've been playing them all consistently, and it's took, taken them, like, over two years to get through all of them. I mean, for, for how long they are and how many there are, that, that tracks. Yeah. 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 Also, I'm pretty sure you'd have to emulate a bunch of them, and I know you're you're not a big fan of that. It's not that I'm not a big fan of it. It's just that I'm not good at it and don't know what I'm doing. And Look, man, I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt there. No, it's I know I know I know my worth. I know my worth. Um any last things you want to say about Tales of Arise though? No, not at the moment. I will hopefully have time. Actually no, I probably won't have time to play more of it. Next week is the the week of all the concerts, so fuck knows if I'll have free time at all. Man, I'm putting at least another 7 hours in on Sunday. I mean, what is it? It's Saturday is Bayside, Tuesday is Newfound Glory, Thursday is Hawthorne Heights and then next Sunday is um Magnolia Park. So I'm just going to be very tired in between. Yep. I mean, you can still play even though you're tired. Not that sort of game. If I'm tired, like, I zone out and I just, I miss everything important. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I play, or played, I watched Avatar for the first time. The Last Airbender, not the Blue People. Oh, uh, all of the it? The movie, fin- right? Did, yeah, yeah, the movie, The, the Last Nightmare Airbender. Movie? Right? I mean, uh, from what one? I hear, between, like, the James Cameron Avatar and this one, um, they're basically just doing the same thing. Huh? So... The the newest Avatar movie focused on on people in the water, and apparently the next Avatar movie is going to focus on people in the fire. Yeah, and the first one was people in the air. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a big old rip off, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, not only did he rip off of Pocahontas, but he's ripping off of Avatar: The Last Airbender. But Drew was asking about the M Night Shyamalan movie. Oh, yeah. I forgot that was a thing. The I've Last never Airbender. Seen it. Yeah, it was. It's I, apparently god awful. <sighs> It was honestly though, honestly though, is very faithful. I I swear, all I've ever seen people say is this movie is nothing like the show. What the fuck did he do to the to Avatar? You know what? Because it didn't have all of the side. You know, it's the first season. When did uh, you finished all of it, right, Cobb? No, I've only watched ten episodes. All right, did you get to the Ice Village yet? Um, Where they deal with the Moon Goddess? No. Okay, so Avatar, so I'm not going to call it Avatar, it's not called Avatar. The Last Airbender, the movie, is, it starts at the beginning of Avatar, The Last Airbender, and goes until past where Cobb is. It doesn't even show the entire storyline, but it is primarily season one of Avatar, The Last Airbender. So people are like, oh, it doesn't follow anything, blah, 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 are complaining because you have a two and a half hour movie showing fucking six and a half hours worth of content. Gotcha. Like, that's why people are mad at it, because of all the side shit that they weren't able to throw in. But honestly, it is very faithful. They stuck to his origins. They stuck to a lot of the key scenes with certain characters. There's a sequence with Zuko um, that, that, and, and, and a blue mask that they stuck with. There's all of the stuff that they did near the end with with the the ice village and the um the the moon goddess all very faithful the only thing that i can think of that they changed up was that in the movie a firebender needed fire nearby in order to bend it whereas in the show they can just bend it no problem without fire being near them. I did. I always like the little bit I've seen so far. I do think that's weird. Like the water benders can only bend if they have water. Yeah. And like realistically, everyone is made up of water. Um. The you the, the, the earth benders have to like like bring it out of the ground, which is not a big problem, but still. And then 
the firebenders can just fucking shoot fireballs out of their hands. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and, and then eventually, like, they, you, you learn how much more advanced firebending can get and how much more advanced waterbending can get. It, it's a great show, but, like, the, the first season, and you said this to us while, while you were t- talking to us in our group chat, the first season is full of a lot of fluff. Um, yeah, and like it, it really, it, it, I, like, I understand that it's a 2004 Nickelodeon show. Yeah. But, like, at at the point I am at, it's it's fine. Like it's not a bad show. Like I'm gonna watch more of it as I have time. But like I do not like based on just ten episodes, I see no reason why this show is as popular as it is. I understand yeah. it gets better, like at like especially in seasons two and three. But like watching like this first season, I'm like, I don't understand why people get so hooked on this if this is how the show starts. <laughs> yeah, it it is it's uh especially I mean they get some good storylines running in season one, but the storylines and things like that that go on in season two and three, the redemptions arcs of, of certain characters and, and, and just like the emotion this show creates, like that's really what kept what, what like people have nostalgia on. Like this is a lot of people's first show that actually has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Has actual emotion, especially an American-made show that has a, as much emotion. That's a fucking kids show. Like it teaches a lot of good story, and 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 and, and has a lot of good morals in this show. Yeah, I think so far the only episode that like I legitimately thought was good as like a, like a whole episode was uh, the one where uh, they go to. It's like an earth bending village kingdom thing, and they basically get um, imprisoned by the the old king there. Oh, yeah. And he makes uh, Ang go through all the trials, and at the end, you find out that he's actually like his, a guy his, that Ang knew a hundred years ago. Yeah, his uh, friend. I can't remember his friend's name, Gumi or something like that. I have no idea. Uh, yeah. Um, did you get to the episode where they were at the air temple? I think um, I think you would have by now. I don't think so. Well, so I got to the episode where like they went to like an island and everyone there had been murdered and that's where um they got the little monkey. Oh yeah, yeah. no, that's not that's the air temple. It's it wasn't an island, it was actually the air temple where he where he finds Momo. That's where he's from. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean that yeah. was like the third episode. Yeah, that's that's where he's from. And even that, like that's three episodes in and it's like this is this is very emotional for kids. Something like this, like I like for 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 us, like we've seen stuff like this before. But to to have a Nickelodeon show in a show where uh, somebody's going back to their home where all their friends were, and it's like it's only felt like a few hours for him. It's been year hundreds of years. Like it's a very emotionally charged episode. What are you saying? The Rugrats weren't emotionally charged? Fuck no. All maybe. grown up, maybe, but not Rugrats. It's all growed up. Yeah. Sorry. God. I don't know, man. The Rugrats were pretty deep. Uh, there was that whole arc where Tommy didn't want a baby brother. The one episode? And a movie. I mean, I've actually never seen the first movie. I've never seen well, any of the movies. Honestly, the Rugrats movie is actually, like, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. And I feel like the second one was okay, too, when Chucky got a stepsister and stepmother. Mm-hmm. Also, there, there was that whole storyline. Like, that's fucking depressing. Like, coming, like, the two-year-old coming to terms with his mother is dead. Was there a story? Was that the movie? That was a movie as well, right? That was the second movie the where movie, yeah. where his so, dad but, meets um the the lady in I think they're in London at the time. Yeah, but see, like these are the movies. The show didn't have any emotion. The show was just. I think the most emotion I remember seeing from the show was the episode uh where Angelica didn't want a baby uh brother. But look, I mean, there was the episode where they showed us that old men like porn. I vaguely remember that. But you're telling me that's emotion? I mean, for for the old man it was. Oh, gross. Gross. The, Tommy's dad was definitely clinically depressed. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There was that episode where Tommy had an existential crisis because he thought that their house was flying and that his mom just died when she ran out the door. I don't. I look, I'm I'm younger than you by two years. I don't remember these episodes as 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 specifically as you do. You're pathetic. I, I, I honestly didn't really care for Rugrats as a kid. Um, there, there was an episode where it was foggy outside, and Tommy thought that the house was in the clouds, and his mom went out for a jog, and he literally thought that she ran out and, like, plummeted to the earth. Oh my god. I, now that you mentioned <laughs> the fogginess, I kind of remember that. I remember none of this. 
I'm sure I've seen every episode of Rugrats. Fucking don't remember no, a goddamn Drew, thing. Drew, you probably had the same experience as most of us. You didn't see every episode of Rugrats. You've seen the same three episodes of Rugrats that were on repeat every There's day. only three episodes. No, legitimately, I think I have seen all of Rugrats. But also, <laughs> yes, I'm sure I've seen many of them multiple times. There was the Christmas episode where they learn, like, the concept of sharing. I just, I remember the episode where Grandpa was going to have a date. And had the kids go to bed when it was still daytime out. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that was another one. That's really all I got. But back to TLA. Avatar TLA. Not the TLA music. I was going to say, you didn't get Philly. that right at all. Um, This is not the theater of the living arts. Yeah, but yeah, I, like I said, like 10 episodes in, like, it, it has it has, it has has its charms. But, like, I have not fully grasped why people think so highly of this thing yet. Mm-hmm. Um. And, like, frankly, like, I honestly find, like, the three main characters annoying. Like... Sounds exactly how I felt about fucking, uh, the... Goddamn, I can't think of the... I can't even think of the name. The Netflix show. Stranger like, Things. Stranger Things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I can see that. But, like, right now, it's just... It's it's very much like a, a mid-2000s kids show. Yeah, So, it's... like, they're all very stereotypical of their character type. And, like, occasionally they'll do cool things, but, like, for the most part, like, Aang acts like a very young child um the the brother whose name i don't remember acts like a so, kind of a prick and the sister Katara. is you know kind of a know-it-all yeah and, and like they they all they they grow and that's the thing like that's why people love this show is because like the, it didn't treat children like children it didn't treat its target audience as children the the characters actually changed and grew up and and there was character progress and like like there's like it, they didn't just do like oh everyone has to wear the same clothes and this and that because that's what kids like no they actually i mean yes everyone wears the same clothes but like they actually change change the story and change how things go and like actually it is it is the best i i'm not going to say it's the best anime it's like it's a it's a good american anime like they did a really good job trying to make an anime basically uh, but it is unfortunate because, like, the first season is very much a Monster of the Week style. Um, but then there are there are some very emotional, heartfelt episodes in the later seasons. Um, yeah, and, like, it's it's not a terribly long series. Like, it's three seasons, they're 20-episode yeah. seasons, and they're all, like, 20 minutes apiece. Like... And, and I think also more people put The Legend of Korra in higher regard than The Last Airbender. Oh, that's fair. Um, but yeah, I, I will not finish it quickly because I'm basically just putting on like an episode or two, like if I'm home, if I'm working from home or something like that. Um, and I don't have anything else that I'm like necessarily watching or, or busy doing for work. Yeah. But that said, I have a question for you guys. Oh boy. It's not a bad question. It's, it's more of a, a proposition, let's call it. Oh God. Not an indecent one. Don't worry. So next week we have book club for La La Land. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Last week, we jokingly said, we, we jokingly alluded to maybe, like, trying to theme book club. Yeah. So, you know, that kind of stuck with me, and, I, and I've thought about it. How do you guys feel about trying to, like, string our book clubs together instead of just picking a random thing each time? Yeah, I'm for it. I'm all for it. And, like, it doesn't have to necessarily be, like, like, La La Land, like, it, like Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are in it. Like, you could easily just, like, Pick a Ryan Gosling or Emma Stone movie. Um, you could pick a musical. Like, we could do fucking Amadeus if it's available somewhere. Um, the word land is in it. We could do, like, the land before time seven. I'm pretty sure there's 14 of them, so. I, see, I'm, I'm more into the idea of picking a similarly styled movie and not just picking, oh, we went La La Land, so pick another movie with land in it. Like, I like the idea of, since we're going La La Land, which is, uh, is it rom-com or is it just, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a romantic uh, comedy drama. So, so since we're going rom-com with La La Land, we don't necessarily have to stick to musical, but try to find a different rom-com of some sort, or maybe lead actors in it. Um, I think sticking to the genre just ma like I agree. Like it doesn't have to like we don't have to go like super like like high on it. Like oh, like the, like there's a there's a word in it. Let's do the next thing based on that word. Yeah. But like doing like like if you if you go by genre only, it does sort of limit you because then it's like okay, so how are we going to get out of this oh, genre? Well, so, yeah, that's exactly what so, I was about to say. Um, my my suggestion would be we each get one pick and then we go to a new genre 
or we go to a new movie. So, since I pick La La Land, Cobb, you pick whatever next movie. True, if you find a pick, you get a pick. Then after that, Cobb, since I picked the, this genre, you pick the next genre. And you pick the next one after that, and then we keep going. And so this way, like, so yeah, you might get two picks in a row if Drew doesn't have an idea for another pick. Um, but you're picking the next movie and genre, which then I have to feed into with my movie choice. And then Drew will have to feed into that. So it's, we're not, I don't think, I don't, I don't think we need to stick to connecting every movie every week, but having a basis of comparative movies across different weeks. So we watch a rom-com, La La Land, we watch a rom-com next time. We can talk about the two of them and how they compare. And then with the next genre, we watch that next, that with another one of that same genre and be able to compare them, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I say, I, why don't we give like, like, ev- like both, both kind of like options a try. Like your option is the easiest one to just try out. Yeah. Like do, do a, do a round of genre, of like genre specific things. Yeah. And like, depending how we're feeling after that, we can then look at it and be like, okay, well, do we, do we want to keep doing this and just trying to find like similar, st- even if it's like styled movies, like it doesn't necessarily have to be like a rom-com, but like if it's just, you know, a, a certain type of comedy, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Cause there are more, um, specific genres than just rom-com. Yeah. Cause um, I, I will let you know, I've had like my next three picks picked out or La La Land. And then my next two picks after that picked out for a few weeks now. So like. I knew I know what I was going to pick next and what I was going to pick after that, but I'm absolutely fine with like sticking with a genre style. What do you think, Drew? Uh, I I mean I could go either way. Richie's way is definitely the more simple way, but whatever, I'm fine for whatever. Not not that I'm going to wind up having that many picks of things anyway. But think about all the musicals that are also romantic comedies. I'm sure that's most musicals. <laughs> we can watch Amadeus. Hairspray. I don't know what Amadeus is. Guess. I, Ge- hold on. Guess. Uh, <laughs> wait, is that... Was that was that The Simpsons? Um, uh, no. The Planet the of Simpsons, the Apes? No, the that's Simpsons Dr. did parody it a little bit. Uh, yeah, they did Dr. Yes. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know Amadeus. I, 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 isn't isn't he that uh, philosophizer or whatever? <laughs> yes. No. Nope. I know. I said philosophizer. I know. I was quoting uh, Zoolander from that one. I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't. It's it's not about what you like how you pronounce it. It's about what you think he is. I I don't know. I don't know what this fucking. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know what Amadeus is. Uh. It. Uh, well. So that's part of someone's name. Like the only person with that name that in history that matters. You're See, actually when, drawing a total fucking blank on this, huh? But here's the thing: when I hear Amadeus, I think Asmodeus, and I'm drawing a blank on what Asmodeus is too. So, <laughs> isn't Asmodeus from Kingdom Hearts? I don't. I feel like it's a D and D thing. I mean, it's possible. Um, Amadeus is Wolfgang Amadeus I'm Mozart. Dead. Yeah. It's it's a comedy <laughs> drama musical movie from 1984. Um, it's a, it's about the rivalry and lives of Antonio Solari and Amadeus see, Mozart. See, I had a feeling it was it was something like that, but my brain kept going Johann Sebastian Amadeus or Johann Amadeus Bach or something. <laughs> like I had I had Johann Sebastian Bach in my head and in my brain, and I was like, "It's Yo- Is it Johann Amadeus Bach? No, that's not it. Wolfgang Beethoven. Wolfgang Amadeus Beethoven. No." What, I, I just, I, even now, you just said his name, and I can't even remember his fucking name. Fucking Mozart. Mozart. Yeah. I, Unfortunately, it's not available on anything to stream for free. But I highly recommend, Rich, that you spend the $4 and watch it on Amazon, because it's a good fucking movie. Nah, I'm good. But it, Unless it, you make me. It stars F. Murray Abraham. Never mind. <laughs> what? Who's F. Murray Abraham? He's an actor. Okay. Would I know him in anything besides Amadeus? I mean, they might be giants. The movie, not the band. Never seen it, as far as I all can the remember. president's men. Never seen it. Uh, let me look at his his more recent movies. Um. Oh, he was in the Lady in the Tramp. Um, live action movie for twenty nineteen. I didn't see it. Man, have you ever watched a movie before? Yeah, I just <laughs> the Grand I, Budapest Hotel. Never seen it. 
Uh, Blood Monkey? Probably what the not fuck is that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this movie looks fucking amazing. Direct to DVD from 2007. There we so go. That uh, are, is a sentence that no one has ever uttered in the history of mankind. Why? What? No, I searched Blood Monkey. It's on Tubi. It's also more expensive to rent on Amazon than Amadeus. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else has F. Murray Abraham? Finding Forrester, Muppets from Space, Star Trek, Star Trek Interaction, Insurrection, I'm sorry. Interaction, jeez. He was in Nostradamus. I, I have not seen any of those. You need to watch more movies. National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon. Never seen it. The Last fuck Action is that Hero. One? Oh, I've, hey, I've, I've seen. I've seen that thirty years ago. Once, I... maybe. And Drew, have you never seen Loaded Weapon? I did not even know that was a fucking movie. Oh yeah, no, they're they're fucking great. Um, the first one stars um Emilio Estevez and Sam Jackson. It's a um, it's like a riff on like Lethal Weapon. Okay. Yeah, did not know those existed. Yeah, I think one of them is, like, Lethal Weapon, like... I'm sorry, no, 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 not Lethal Weapon. Loaded Weapon, like, one and a half or something like that. Or am I thinking of a different series? Are you thinking one? of Naked Gun 33 and a third? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of there. But, yeah, <laughs> loaded, loaded Weapon is, like, another, like, parody sort of thing of, like, those, like, buddy cop movies from the time. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson and fucking Gordon Bombay. But, yeah, so so we'll, we'll, we'll try a couple rounds where we do, like, genre-specific, specific, see if that... If that works, if it doesn't, we'll we'll do something else. Go back to what we've been doing. Just th- thought it'd be thought it'd be nice to like mix it up a little bit. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. And like get a little like continuity going between things. That's why yeah. I was thinking like if like if if we just so my thinking was and I was stealing this entirely from Waypoint, which I I had mentioned last week is every time somebody picks something, they have to find the connection between like the movies. Um, and it's not like. Most of them are, are, it's a pretty obvious connection. You know, same director, same actors, like, similar genre or, or like, plot device in it. But yeah, so, so Rich, since you picked La La Land, um, Drew, do, do you think you would have a pick to come off of La La Land? Uh, off the top of my head, no, but, um, I can try. <laughs> yeah, cause you, you figure based on the genres, you could go romantic, musical, comedy drama or rom-com and you you could even go for extra points and pick crazy stupid love which is a romantic comedy drama starring ryan gosling and emma stone yeah that's but the no, one where not. ryan is that the one with uh uh steve carell yeah it's a, it's a, it's actually a pretty good movie yeah i've seen it it's actually not that bad yeah it's like um steve carell is like a recent divorcee yeah um emma stone is his like adult daughter and he also has like a teenage yeah. son and younger daughter ryan gosling oh. teaches steve carell how to be a player and then meets uh meets emma stone and they start dating and then steve carell's like no you're not allowed to date my daughter because you're a player and whatnot and yeah i've seen it yeah or yeah. i've seen i've seen most of it I've seen bits and bobs of it. it could have it could have been way worse than it was yeah but like honestly it, it had a very good good cast yes um but, okay, so all that said, uh, next week we will be doing La La Land for our book club, and then we'll do something tangentially related. Yes. Makes sense. It works. Um, any, anything else either of you guys want to say before we wrap up? Nope. Check. I think I'm good. Be, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Walnuts. All right, hang on. I just need to make a timestamp so I can cut that out. <laughs> I mean, I already said it earlier in the episode, too. Anyway, forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> anyway. 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 Right. If you I got worried me- I got dropped for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, did did I lose my connection? Oh no. Okay. And Cobb just it's- broke. No, I'm I am very tired today for some reason. Man, I'm tired for reason. And I'm more mentally here than you are today. Why are you tired? I had two wings games, a Flyers game, and was out till one in the morning playing board games at my brother's last night. In the last four days. But you also worked from home every day. No, he hasn't worked since I've last week. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were off this week. Yeah, I was off Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and today. I, we had concert Friday, comedy show Saturday, and then I had full day clients on Monday and today. So that was, you know, 5.30 wake-ups, driving for an hour, all that fun stuff. Just tired. Fun. Yeah. just a Just a tired fucking week, guys. That, that out of the way. 
If you'd like to find more of our content, you can head over to www.1-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there with dollars, though, you can go to your favorite podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all the other places that podcasts are served for the most part. You can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or at one underscore quest on Instagram and Twitter. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo, and you can always send us emails to social at one-quest.com. And Rich, what's your streaming uh, schedule? Uh, check me out, twitch.tv slash b underscore one. That's where I do video game streaming Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, where you can watch me playing Tales of Arise for the better part of the next at least two weeks, probably, if not more. Cool. And with that, we will be back next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you. Bye.